Hey, Saints and Ains, how art thou? What up with y'all? How are you today, Preston Perry? I'm chilling. What does that mean? That means I'm like really relaxed, you know what I'm saying, just in chill mode. You want to ask me a question to open this up or you want me to figure out some random to say? Do you know that you like really, really, really pretty? Wow. Like really pretty. Wow. Like I look at I your thought it eyes, would be more interesting than that. And I get like a little tingle down my spine. I don't know how to feel about tingles. I mean, this, that sound like paralysis. <laughs> <laughs> what? It just sound like you know Superman, the first one. Yeah, you're pretty. You got your little edges, shiny and stuff. You know what I'm saying? A little makeup, beat, face beat. You're pretty. All right. So with us today, we have Caress. Uh, what? What's your real last name? I knew you were gonna say that. What is it? Well, my hmm. That see, that's a whole. That's too personal. No, well, I ain't asked my dad how he feel about it, but I go by Caress Dion. Oh. Dion is my middle name. Okay. Um, I mean, do we really know where our last names come from? Oh, oh. <laughs> just say X. <laughs> <laughs> Caress, I was I Caress was going X. through a Caress X phase, but I was like, I know I like Caress Dion or Muhammad. <laughs> that's the two that people pick muhammad or x caress that's x I, that's what i should have done <laughs> nah i mean i like it i like caress dion so i was like my uncle gave me that uh -huh. he chose that for yeah, me. yeah 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 you and know I where like that came that. from say what now? you know where that came from yes yeah, exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. okay i was like nah no, okay. <laughs> you know something else i don't know no nah, i'm just saying <laughs> yeah okay so. so you see caress she's dressed real scottish uh she's always been one of the swaggiest people that i know yeah, so you own a. W before we get to the spiritual stuff, you you own. <laughs> well, no, nah, that's gonna be spiritual too. Okay, you own a vintage T-shirt situation. I have a online vintage shop. There we go. Um, there's T-shirts, there's skirts, there's. Oh, jeans. you basically said you own more than just. It's not just T-shirts for oh, me because okay. I don't just wear T-shirts. Oh, I think you, we need clothes. You're right for every occasion. We need quilts and things. I do also like quilts. <laughs> <laughs> Turning one into a pair of pants pretty soon. Stay tuned. What? Okay, what so this is why Caress is here, okay? <laughs> is that, how do I? I you got I, your arms folded. How do I? <laughs> it's so many things on my mind. Okay, so a while, I, I think we met a while ago. Years ago. Oh, we met at, no, Reach Ooh. Conference. Remember when Reach Records had a conference and you was helping with uh, Natalie and all that? And I was supposed to be... I don't Speaking know. The next day, that's actually part of what need, you can. T you want you going there today? No. So I've known Caress for a minute, and then when I moved to Atlanta, Caress helped me uh, manage my bookings, and so like we we had some history. Then there was this situation where Caress kind of you know was processing her faith in in a very unique way. That's such a nice way of putting it. And then she was like, faith. <laughs> what's that and so in the meantime while she was like faith <laughs> what's that <laughs> she kind of like put up a post where she was like coming for me and preston and so i was like oh by that's, coming mean like you know like yeah that's what we're doing coming for our heads and Ooh, so she had go. blocked me Damn. and so no I, I have to give context i know no no i didn't even you don't remember blocking me that's what we got to talk about <laughs> why don't i remember it when you go when you go, when you out of your mind you out of your mind <laughs> you had a lot to forgive me for no wonder you took so long to respond to that <laughs> it's all coming so back so she blocked me so we because i had text you blocked you, me too and i said yeah you just got the i said yeah. <laughs> i see you're processing through a lot like i love to just sit down and hear your heart like i don't got to challenge you i you just text me hear that yeah. but i didn't get it I think you got it. You no. didn't respond. It it wasn't. It was blue when it went through. I don't know. It was blue when it went through. Anywho, and so the fact that she's sitting here is because is the grace <laughs> that you even let me. Sit. She had texted me so like sometime this summer, and I just saw the top of the text. I'm like, I'm not dealing with that because I just, I just, I felt away, right? And so then I had a conversation with KB. KB was like, you know, Caress came back to the faith. I said, Caress. Yeah, we was in Tampa with KB, and he was like, Jackie was like caress oh i guess i gotta read her text now <laughs> mm, mm, that's a good point thank, so i thank read you, the, the text 
Caress was apologizing, saying that she wasn't in her right mind and that Jesus then did a work. And we sat down for coffee and I was like, so tell me about the last two years of your life. Like what has been happening? And she just told me this story that was such a blessing to me that I was like, can you please pray about if the Lord wants you to say this on the podcast? And so I say all of that to say, here we are. Okay, so let's give some context. What is your what was your relationship with Jesus, the church, the Bible before this whole season? Um, so I grew up going to church. Um, I mean, it's Georgia. Mm -hmm. You black. You going to church. That's <laughs> kind of I don't know where everybody else what they got going on, but that's kind of the thing. So I grew up going to church. Um, but I would say like it was it was definitely like religion and not religion in the sense of like it permeated my entire life, mm -hmm. but more like ritual tradition. We knew to go to church. We knew to thank God. I played basketball. I dribbled the ball three times at the free throw line before I shoot it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ritual. Um, but no, um, fast forward when I got to college, like I met these people who were just on like I would say on fire for Jesus, but I thought it was crazy. I was like, no, I'm Christian, mm -hmm. I'm good, but y'all seem like y'all got something I don't got. Mm -hmm. And maybe I've missed the mark of what it means to be a Christian mm -hmm. just by how like serious they seem. So anyways, I became a believer, or I would, I thought I became a believer in college. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that now based on the last couple of years of my life. Mm -hmm. I thought I became a believer in college and I just like went around telling everybody about Jesus. I mm. was, I had a radio show. I wrote for the school newspaper. Everything was exciting for me about Jesus. I did a lot of talking at though, for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, uh, when I graduated from college, I worked at different record label, like different Christian labels with Christian artists, uh, doing media stuff. I worked at churches, ministries. So like that was my, that was what, every, that's what it looked like on the outside for my yeah, life. Yeah. I'll say that part. Um, I definitely am passionate when I, when I get into something, I get passionate about it. So I think there was a true passion for what I was into mm -hmm. at the time, mm -hmm. which was Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of spread that to people. Like I had a Christian, I had a brand, mm -hmm. y'all was wearing it, I appreciate y'all. <laughs> I, I like the shirts. Um, and I like, I just wanted to tell people what was important to me, which was God. Like I just, it just, I don't know the depth of that for me, mm -hmm. the way I know it now. But I think at the time I was definitely like, I think God's real. That's all I know. I think God's real. I mm -hmm. think everybody need to know that. Mm -hmm. um, so that was what my relationship was like with yeah. God. And yeah. So what was happening? Sorry. You yeah. No. No. I feel like y'all. You know, she she, uh, she came at you worse than so. So, <laughs> so uh, y'all can y'all can talk. Really, this is a. <laughs> What, so what Mediation. was what was the experience or the shift when you started to question the Jesus that you were serving? Like yeah. what triggered that? Right. So it didn't all happen at once for mm. sure. I didn't just wake up one morning and have like and just decide like forget all this and mm. forget all these people too. And you know, um, I think there was. I, I thought about that like. I think I was actually already questioning underneath the surface, like, was I really content in Christ? Mm. I'm telling people to enjoy God, but do I feel like this is, is, is God better than everything? I don't know for mm. sure mm -hmm. because I don't really know about every other thing. So mm. like mentioning uh, me growing up in church and all that, I was, I guess I was kind of like a good girl on, mm. on the surface, I would say like, not that I didn't have sin in my life, yeah. but I guess it wasn't stuff you could point out the way you could point out other people's stuff. Yeah, yeah, and so yeah. that's, you know, that's mm -hmm. what people go by. So, um, yeah, I, that was the, the path that I was on. And so I think my question to myself was like, is God really better? And this, mm -hmm. this might sound weird, but I was listening to your book a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about, in some way or another, you were talking about having a girlfriend. And I remember feeling like I've had secret relationships, 
but I've never just gotten to be. Yeah, to be like, gay. To be queer. Well, yeah. queer is what I identified as, but yeah. like, I never just got to be queer. And there was even like a, I was like, I know that ain't the intention of this girl's book <laughs> <laughs> to make people jealous. Hey, the truth. Hey, yeah. it, it, it reaches where it reaches. Yeah. And for me, it was like, hmm, huh, I for the rest of my life, mm. I'm going to not embrace that. How do I mm. really feel about that? Mm. Around that same time, um, different people that I was around, different conversations that I was hearing, I beca- I became aware of the concept of queer Christ- like queer Christians or affirming churches. Mm-hmm. And it may sound crazy, but I really didn't know that yeah. it existed. Yeah. And so I think it planted this seed in me of like, wait a minute. There's something that I've been like wrestling with mm. all this time and feel like I've experienced some consequences for it within church or within ministry or whatever. But like there's a there was a place for it mm. that I didn't know that I could have probably went to. Mm. And so that that could sound like, oh well, look, you're learning, there's more out mm. there. Mm-hmm. But it felt like I was in private school and I just went to public school. Mm. It was like mm-hmm. like shocking. And mm. rather than it, rather than me saying, let me sort through all of it, it was like, wait a minute, all this is, everybody has made up their own perspective of the Bible. Mm. All these sides are like within Christianity, I just started feeling like people have just, they read this, this is what they get from it, mm-hmm. and they take, and you know, they develop a movement yeah. towards that. And so in saying that, do you mean that when you found out about queer Christianity, then it felt like, oh, there's these people who have developed a whole theology based on the same Bible that I was reading and submitting to. And so it's like, so all of y'all got different interpretations and I'm just now getting wind of this. And so. And so, and also, did you exactly. feel cheated? Did you? Interesting. <sighs> Yeah, because I, I, I would assume forgive, it's like... Forgive me for saying it now, God, but like, did I feel cheated? I was like, yo, I could have been. Yeah. The things here. I have with... The things I have gone without <laughs> and I could have been enjoying. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can see that. Woo, yeah. you're talking about cheated. And I was just... That's... that's you just gave me language. Yeah. I think that and that sparked something in me like uh uh-uh and but rather than it being let me go let me go try out this kind of christianity it 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 was almost like at the bottom of it like this isn't this can't be real if if something like this is so up for grabs and Mm. it's been this but we've known this we've known that I've I've heard that same sex relationships um, are not things that God supports my whole life, but like now this, mm-hmm. oh come on, yeah. wow. wait a minute, this whole thing, it was a sham. It was this whole thing was a sham. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just gonna say that I feel like there is a unique temptation that comes to Christians that never had a ratchet season. You know, that's what my auntie said. Because for us. Yeah. We weren't raised Christian. Yeah. And so we were we ratchet. Were heathen. And so all of <laughs> all of the sin and the temptation like we were able to and I'm not saying able as in it was good or wise, but I'm saying we explored the f- like the halfway fullest depth of our depravity. Mm. And so then when we turned to Christ, we already knew what the world had to offer. So yeah. it was like, nah, I done tried that no, and I like, don't want it. I know for a fact Jesus is better. Yeah, but <laughs> what I meet is like that people People that grow up in church that struggle just be different because they like even cats that we know that are married who only had sex with one wife they be in their mind like but but there's so many other women there's all these things you get what i'm saying yeah and it's yeah. just like that's so it's such a demonic mm. it's such a demonic thing because that's what happened in the garden it's like yeah mm-hmm, you got mm-hmm. this but there's more yeah, right that, they, <laughs> they never knew of any other thing I, so, and i i love that you just said that's what happened in the garden one thing like and I I may share something about this later, but like my experience has made me look at the Bible completely different. It's like, hmm. come on, I'm like, we people are debating how many days of was it a real animal talking. It's like, yo, that's the experience right there. Yeah. I don't know if this is enough. 
I don't know if what God has put parameters around is actually sufficient. Mm. Like, I'm questioning that. Oh, that's what they were talking about in the garden. Not like, was it at, like uh, yeah, people yeah, yeah. getting into all, yeah, these, all, the, yeah. Yeah. all these technical things head really arguments? It's like, like oh. people out here trying to figure out if yeah. it's okay for them to go do what, like to wild out because they trying to find something to fill themselves yeah. while y'all arguing about how many days of creation was it really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> what were you gonna say? Right. I was gonna say I, I, I want to be careful be, uh, because I I know this is your story, uh, and I don't want to I don't want to try to make it about us more than we have to. But I think the beautiful things about your story is not just about what God has done with you <clears throat> only, but also about how like God reconciles relationships that was broken because of mm -hmm. what happened. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So I, I you talk about like when you first started to find about queer church churches and stuff like that um i can imagine that you know you being you know connected with jackie and friends with jackie and she's being one of the leading voices in the christian community about sexuality right Woo, um, like, boiling it was like, a different kind of fire shut up in my bones yeah <laughs> like like yeah boiling in a way and so like i think it's 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 great to highlight that you know hmm. um that type of that feeling that you felt uh, against uh, uh, with her. And I think it's good for people to see that it's not necessarily personal when it's spiritual, mm -hmm. you know, but also too like, cause you said some things, man. You was like, can I say it? You can listen. Remind. Yeah. She made a Put post. Put me in remembrance. She made a post, a long post. <laughs> and she was like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna write a book called petty girl. Good God. <laughs> I was like, Whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> Pause. Wait, I, that <laughs> sounds familiar. Horrible title, anyway. <laughs> that sounds familiar. You know clever. what I'm saying? It, it was, was clever. clever. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, it <laughs> I might still run with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, <laughs> a, I'm still a creative. You know what I'm saying? I ain't rocking with y'all, but I'm still a creative. Oh man. Uh, so can you talk about oh, man. that 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 tension? You know, and even coming back to the Lord and having to yeah, you talk about that and, like, and what you what you felt. And I want to add to it to to widen it a bit, which is you're discovering queer church uh queer theology all the things but you also were really rooted pretty deeply in a local church in a local community like your work was surrounded with christians your life was full of christians so i guess also what was happening inside of you that made the people around you enemies mm -hmm. mm. Whew, what was happening inside me you know i don't I, I told you this the other day. I was like, y'all are talking about something on your podcast. And it sounds like somebody in my life mm -hmm. that I know. And I think there was this, like, I still cared what Christians thought of me. Mm -hmm. When I decided, like, this is all a sham, like, and left. It was, there was still, like, this, like, and I, I don't, I would say, is that the Lord that could have been that could have been God keeping me sensitive to something mm. about him. Um, but it was a like the thing I don't think people maybe recognize and maybe it's actually hard to have empathy or sympathy if you don't understand the process. But like to leave your entire community mm. on one end and then you zoom out and you say, yeah, and then you left your entire faith. Mm. Like. If ev and, and for me. I thought I was really follow like like even if I was walk even if I was far in the back I was walking behind Jesus I thought uh, yeah so to go another route I don't where do where literally where do I go yeah yeah those were my words for life yeah. like mm. I didn't know where to go that's traumatic mm. and so there's tons of emotions that come up you feel lonely you feel angry and I think hearing you stood as like for for me it was like. <laughs> like it and I heard y'all say this on your podcast before it felt personal like there's it's hard for people to like take a like separate sexuality from identity right so for me it felt like 
I, I was just, I was mad at the idea that God was not okay with me being who I was. Mm-hmm. Like that was so important to me. And the fact that you were saying that you were standing in that with God, it's like anybody on God's side mm-hmm. right now, anybody on God's side, period. <laughs> Like I, I found in my journal, I wrote in my journal one time, like F God, like, mm. like literally, I mean, I, I didn't just put the F. Yeah. <laughs> you spelled it out. I spelled it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's not this kind of show. Mm. So I was so mad. Mm. And you, even as you guys talked about, I remember y'all talked about Sage and all the, y'all were mm. talking about different things. And I was like, man, people are just trying to figure out how to make sense of life because God doesn't want us as we are. Or wow. God is like... It's this is all like I just was angry. I don't even think it it makes sense. Yeah, There's yeah. no sense to make of when you're when you're trying to make sense of life and nothing around you like I live with my sister at the still now and she's a believer and I basically kind of she would say I discipled her mm-hmm. into the faith. So like the tension there at home, there's nowhere and I, I think that's wow. just a sidebar to like how I I feel like I got to where I got to because there may be, I I, I could tell you this. I was Googling like crazy, mm-hmm. like center for relief. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Decon- where can I go to deconstruct yeah. and not have to worry about paying my bills right now? Yeah. 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 Other people have typed that kind of stuff in too. Yeah. Like Google history is a thing. Yeah. I mean, whatever, but it's like, where do you go? Yeah. Even peop even people that mean well, or you just feel like a Christian won't be safe. That that's an, that's important. Was that your experience with John? That when you you because you did, I you went to my pastor. Out. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, John, my pastor was one of my best friends at the time. Still is now. Like, cause I had to come back to him too. I had I had a lot of coming back to do. <laughs> um, but yeah, he and I like sat down and we were going to work through a book together, but I was so sensitive to like, I felt, I actually felt like, I don't know what to believe anymore from anyone. Yeah. Like what if I had been brainwashed my whole life? Mm-hmm. Like, cause people, it, I saw, now that's another thing I realized people feel like Christians are like, y'all, you feel like y'all are like robots. You're mm-hmm. brainwashed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then later on in life, I, I mean, now I realize like, yeah, my mind is being renewed yeah, consistently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, mm. you're right. That is what's happening to me. Yeah. But like at the time, there was kind of like this, I think there was this part of me that felt like, and somebody has said this to me before, like how can you be smart and think real deep questions about life and still be a Christian? Mm. That's so old. Mm. That's so outdated. And you're a woman and you're black. Yeah. What wow. are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. It seemed and, foolish. And it seemed foolish. And I don't know if it's just Atlanta or other parts of the world like this, but there was, there's so much here mm. that you can turn to or people have different beliefs and all types of things. And it's like, it just made me feel like I have no idea what's real. Mm. Um, mm. And so I think I was mad. I, I was, I was angry. Um, and I think I just, <laughs> Yeah, it, I think it was just kind of black. I blacked out yeah. and just went off on whoever. I got a two-part question because I think for the people who are listening, I think it's, I think it would be good for for you to kind of let them know, like, what when you left, like, like how, like, what all did you like, kind of dibble and dabble in, like, okay. like you know. But also, what was that defining moment that kind of like led you back to Jesus? Because you talk about. Mm-hmm. You talk about like, you know, how the world tries to convince you that Christians just do a good job of brainwashing people. But when I hear your testimony, I don't see that. I I see God himself, Hmm. you know, and that's the powerful thing about the Christian faith. It's not what we know and what people can convince us. It's an experience Hmm. with the holy and and a living God. And I think that that's what you experience. And so can you talk about that process of, like what did you end it like 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 leaving the faith and feeling like oh i can be a quick christian and then what did you end up Mm -hmm. going into okay you know and then how the lord brought you back so i want i feel like um i don't know who said it but do what thou wilt yeah that was alistair crowley yeah church of satanism dang i just (laughs) knew jay-z had it on the sweatshirt (laughs) i don't know what that's supposed to be no it's satanic yeah Okay. See, now it all makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I wouldn't have went off on you and just text you. No, Maybe you could have helped me. Right. <laughs> you could have avoided all this. It's a process. So, um, 
I think at some point, like that became, I, I live by things, man. Like I sometimes change my bio on Instagram just because this is what I'm living by right mm -hmm. now. And I need that to be known. If I had a saying, do without will was it for me. It was like, I'm gonna do whatever I want to do because why not? What if, why not? Like, mm -hmm. that's just like, and I think that is what every, that, that sounds good. Like do what feels good to you. Yeah. That actually sounds like helpful for people. Mm -hmm. And so I was just like, yeah, I'm gonna do whatever I want to do. So that meant drugs. I was, I had a girlfriend like, and not, and finally I would say that's how I felt the word finally for the past. Mm -hmm. I'm still working through it. Um, but at the time, I felt like, finally, I don't have to hide this about myself. Like, mm -hmm. I just get to be. Like, I think I felt like I'm just being. And I think things, I, I was looking earlier, like, what was I doing this time last year? I was launching my collection for, like, my clothing brand. And I was excited about it and things went well. But I looked at a picture from the same, the same time frame and I was Googling, like, self-esteem mm -hmm. how do i know if my self-esteem is low like mm -hmm. i was i was there were things going on that felt good so there that's another thing that i didn't know mm -hmm. that bad things felt good mm. uh. <laughs> oh wow why I, didn't you know it because of the church girl thing because of the church girl thing and i think there's just like sometimes when people talk about Sometimes when people talk about sin, it makes it sound like it. there's no pleasure that you can even experience uh, in it. Yeah. Like that, yeah. it, going back to the garden, like yeah. it does look like this. Yeah. It is good for this. Yeah. Yeah. That's not the deceit. Uh. Like it's actually whether or not I trust that this is best. Like wow. what God is telling me. Here. You better preach to us. <laughs> no, go on. So like I, I think things felt good for a while and then... Like I said, around the same time last year, my, my self-esteem was still low. Even though people were applauding me mm -hmm. for different things that I was doing in fashion and whatever, I I couldn't make sense. Like I didn't, I would say I didn't have peace. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know how to define it. it it's, I think you know it when you feel it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think... I, at that time, like I was, I was taking antidepressants. I was smoking weed. I was trying other drugs. Like I was all types of things. And this is not a defense of people doing drugs, but I wonder if people actually thought about why are people doing drugs? Mm -hmm. Why are people, do why are people doing whatever they're doing? Yeah. And not just like all these drugs, all these potheads, these or whatever. It's like people are, not to mention it was 2020, a yeah. pandemic. What is life? That's true. Right. Then as a mm. black person, watching black people get killed on the streets by cops and people pretending to be cops. Yeah. yeah. Here in Georgia, like, yeah. that, there's, no there's no excuse for sin, but there is a recognition of, like, people, there's things that, that can feel so heavy. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't know where to go. And I wasn't trusting God because I didn't feel like, I could show up as myself to God. Like yeah. my mom was texting me like, God still loves you. God still loves you. I'm like, God don't love me as so, I am. Say what your yeah. mama said about. Uh... And then she would text me later on and be like, you're not worried about hell no more. <laughs> like, and even I, I love my mom. And I think that's another thing that like, for I, I recognize people. And that's something to people who are currently thinking through their faith or deconstructing, like the people around you, like even if you don't believe in God, you, you there's something about giving people grace because you're looking for grace right now mm -hmm. that says like, they don't, they don't, you've changed. They haven't, yeah. they don't know what to do with you right now. They don't uh, know what not to say. I was living with my sister. She felt like it was eggshells at one point. Like yeah. she didn't know what she could say, what she couldn't say. Yeah. So everybody, like, everybody needs to breathe <laughs> yeah. and needs that grace and so um but anyways i was trying to calm my mind my mind was going crazy mm -hmm. my mental health was horrible like i'd been diagnosed with like a mood disorder mm -hmm. like all types of things and some people would say later on like i don't know if you really had a mood disorder was it were you just under attack was this yeah. spiritual warfare it's like i don't 
I'm still gonna take my medicine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna say that. Um, and pray. I'm gonna do both pills yeah. and prayer for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. You know, I like that new shirt. <laughs> I'm looking everywhere to find peace. Even in the relationship I was in, I, I was trying new types of dynamic. I all just and it was a relationship with a, a woman, um, but like nothing i even couldn't trust her at some, it was just like nothing i i didn't have peace of mind and it had become normal for me to feel like i just hope i don't wake up tomorrow mm-hmm. cuz i don't i can't make sense of life and i don't really know where to go like i just hope i don't wake up tomorrow and then one day that that feeling became so heavy mm-hmm. that it was like I got to do something about not waking up. Mm -hmm. And I remember knowing that I had like uh, pills at home and I was at home by myself. My sister was at work and I was like, it, it felt like in my, like rushing in my brain were just thoughts like, it's never going to stop. It's never going to stop. You're never going to find peace. You're never going to find peace in who you are. Even if you try to embrace your queerness, you're not going to find peace there. But like, that's all I just kept it. I just didn't. It was like an attack. Mm-hmm. It literally did feel like an attack. And so I got in my car and I'm like, I'm gonna drive. I just got to get I, I got to get out of here. I t- tried calling people. Mm-hmm. Nobody answered the phone. Mm hmm. No one answered the phone and I got back home and I was like, all right, I'm going inside and I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know what would have happened because in that moment I felt, I felt like it was my end. Like Mm -hmm. I had literally gone to the end of myself Mm -hmm. and I was like, at that moment I said, I had not prayed in, in, I hadn't called, I hadn't used the word God in probably two to three years because it felt so, I was like, that's a Christian that, that belongs to Christianity. I, Mm -hmm. even in my going away from God, I, it was, it wasn't, maybe there's another God. It's like, Mm -hmm. nah, Mm -hmm. I don't want nothing to do with that one. Even if that is the one, but the other ones don't really make sense. (laughs) (laughs) Just keeping it real. Um, but in that moment, getting to the end of myself, crying my eyes out i said god help me Mm -hmm. and as soon as i got that out of my mouth a friend called and she said caress are you okay and i was like no i'm not okay wow and she's a believer she I don't know how her name's Bucci. I don't know how she managed to maintain friendship with me being as solid as a believer as she was, but also listening to me talk about relationship struggles with a woman, mm-hmm. listening to me talk about doing dr- like her prayer, what that did for her prayer life. No telling. Yeah. Wow. You're welcome, Bucci. <laughs> <laughs> no. But she talked to me and she just, I just, I just let everything come up. Wow. Everything that I felt, I just started saying it. Everything I felt towards God, I said it out loud. I just, and there was so much anger and hurt there. And my sister eventually came home. I was on the floor crying. She asked me, she said, do you want to surrender? Wow. And I was like, it's almost like, I don't know what else to do. And well, you hear? I tried it all. I've, tr- I've tried it from from my perspective. I mean, some people might say, "Nah, there's some other." Th- you, I think people may feel like this ain't making you got emotional. A- it's making me emotional. You cry. I don't, I'm, a, I'm a G. Who gives a black man permission to feel? <laughs> <laughs> I think people might say like, "There's this place you have to break through, and you can finally let go of all that what you think you have to do." Like God, it's almost like this idea of like God. It's I thought the trauma was coming from, I thought I was experiencing trauma from God. Like, no, God, you've hurt me so much. When in reality, and on this side of things, I feel like I was experiencing what it, almost like what it felt like to say, I want to live life without God. Mm -hmm. I was, that was like, (gasps) I don't want to live. I can't, I don't know how people, I literally do not know. I cannot make sense of it. And... My, I, I, I said, yes, I want to surrender. My sister prayed for me and I take these walks on this trail um, 
And like a couple of days later, I took a walk on a trail and I just started like telling God more of everything that I had been feeling. And I got quiet on the way back. And it was like, I hadn't picked up the Bible in two, three years either. Mm -hmm. Of course not. Yeah. I wasn't talking to God. I wasn't going to try to read all those words. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's like scripture just started mm -hmm. popping in my head. That God was just reminding me of things. And it was just like, take your time. Take your time. I'm here with you. I'm walking with you. And it's like the light bulb went off. Like, wait a minute. I cried out to God a mm -hmm. couple of days ago. And he heard my cry. Oh, you. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can't yeah. tell me nothing. Yeah. <laughs> like God, God is listening to me. Yeah. <laughs> and what's cr the reason why I say I don't know was I had saved before mm -hmm. is because why was that is that is wow. huge. When I saw what's the little ones, what's your little one's name that was going yeah, around hugging Autumn. everybody, Autumn. saying thank you God, thank yeah. you God. Yeah. I'm with her. Yeah. <laughs> like <gasps> wow. This is the gospel. Like God loving us, the creator of the universe, taking time out. Pe people who got 600 followers sometimes can't even, they don't have time to respond to you. They mm -hmm. actually don't have time. Mm -hmm. God is somehow managing an entire planet, mm -hmm. but listening to me who said F you last year. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I'm for real, y'all. I'm, yeah. I'm like. That's beautiful. And so I, that. It for me it was like real like oh shoot oh snap what do I do now this God loves me yeah uh, God, he want he wants me to live even if I don't want to yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah. oh that's that type of love almost sounds obsessive yeah. it's crazy love and I'm like okay you really love me yeah. so let me let me let me con initially what 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 rushed around my mind was like oh snap though. Mm. Now what can't I do no more though? <laughs> you gotta take up my cross. Oh snap. And yeah. it was like, and even even my how yeah. I felt about God was one way, but I was like, now what about Jesus though? Mm -hmm. And I, I separated uh, them. I'm not saying they are, but I separated them because people you can get by, especially now, mm -hmm. with just talking about God, because people will call uh, God by different names uh -huh. or universe spirit creator great creator all these things can still just go under the umbrella of god mm -hmm. and people don't know for sure what yeah. you're talking about yeah but when people start saying jesus ah! then it's like uh-oh we're getting specific, we're getting specific yeah. one way yeah it's, that's exclusive that's that's outdated that's just not jesus forces us to to choose and to to have a, a stand hmm. you know and that uh i heard a preacher say the world would hypocritically applaud any man who claim he is a seeker of truth but they will call for a public execution for a man who claim he has found it and so i think in 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 one way like you know we can say god and people can celebrate y'all you on your quest for spirituality mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but once you say jesus it's like how you know jesus is the way like it's like they they, they 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 respect you when you on this quest yeah but once you say you found something once you when you mm. once you landed somewhere it's like how you know your way is the way everybody becomes skeptic you know what i'm saying and so that's <laughs> the beautiful thing about jesus um you know like he is the way the truth and the life and the world is not going to respect when you when you land on it. Mm. that it's like even things that I've read before, which I sometimes we can have disciplines or I had certain disciplines that I was reading the Bible or reading certain books. And in retrospect, I was like, man, I was just getting a lot of head knowledge. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, I don't know if I love God with my heart and if I knew how to love my neighbor. Mm -hmm. However, now I'm living certain things and those words are coming back to me. I think that's wow. just the, that's how God works. Yeah. Like you want to remember everything you read in a book the next day and yeah. be able to regurgitate it. But it's like maybe 10 years later, mm. that one line hits you yeah. mm. and CS Lewis's line about um, like meeting Jesus and him either being, if we're going to, if you're going to be confronted by the real Jesus, mm. you're going to walk away saying he's either a liar, he's Lord, or he's a lunatic. Yeah. Mm. Like you can't just say he was a good man. You don't have that option. Yeah. That finally hit me. Like forces you I started, choose. I yeah. was like, 
I don't know if this is legit. Let me read some outside sources mm-hmm. about Jesus. And I started <laughs> looking up stuff on YouTube. Like, I know I'm a scholar. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I could tell you what the archaeologists have said about this and that. And I was like, oh, snap. They're saying Jesus really walked the planet. Mm. This was real. They can't really validate the faith stuff because that's not their realm. Mm-hmm. But, like, there's too much around this. Mm-hmm. Something happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, and that's a, that I get excited because I'm the Bible feels fresh to me right now. It yeah. feels like the story of Jesus is not some outdated story. Mm-hmm. It's like, like w- this should be viral. Yeah. When, yeah. <laughs> when you told me how, cause I, I think I asked you something about how have your, how have the people that, you know, you were doing life with, uh, how have they responded to the shift? Because I've heard it phrased as, you know, in one sense it's kind of like coming out of the closet again. And so it's like, sometimes people have to come out of the closet as gay or queer but then you have to come out of the closet as christian right and so it's like you told me a conversation with somebody where you you they they brought up the subject of denial yeah um someone who i would say i know they care about me deeply and in their mind because they don't follow jesus this doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Specifically, my sexual desires, why would I deny them? Mm-hmm. Like, this, like, their words were like, that sounds like denial. And it, it's like, I was like, it is. Mm-hmm. It's me denying myself to follow Christ because Christ has the way to life. Mm-hmm. And it's, I actually, I realized that takes, that takes a humility, humility that I don't think, People, like that's just not popular mm-hmm. to be a sheep mm-hmm. to say i'm a sheep not only is it not popular but it's it's not possible apart from the holy spirit exactly it's it's something that the holy spirit has to do and i love the fact that you talked about before when you was a christian you knew all of these things but once you but once you saw god actively involved in your life mm-hmm. it transformed your heart in a way right. yeah that's what the holy spirit does yeah and that's the thing that separates christianity from other religions mm-hmm. that's all head knowledge that's all law driven right these these rules right but christianity is not just rules and not just laws it, it's those things um but it's an experience mm-hmm. and once you had an experience with the holy spirit like it changed you, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And so it's just not, you know what I'm saying? And so like, I, I I think for me, being an evangelist, talking to people, it's like, it's it's not, it's it's not, I want to reach them, but I'm not beating them. I'm, I try my best not to beat people over the head with scripture because I, I realize that I'm talking to somebody who doesn't have the nature that I have. Literally. And, and so, and so, and so it, it, you, you have a, you, you can empathize. This is how the Bible says you, you were once them, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so like for you to, to have that experience, to know all these things about God and then mm-hmm. deconstruct your faith and then go down this road and it's like, then be at your wit's end. It's like, I don't know what to do other than call, call on God mm-hmm. where he wanted you. Mm-hmm. Literally. That's yeah. literally where he wanted you. Yeah. And he came down, he was like, I'm going to allow this woman to experience me. Yeah. And so that's that's the beautiful thing about the gospel, mm. um, that Jesus condescended and he sends his Holy Spirit um, to dwell in our hearts. And so that's, yeah. that's I, so beautiful. I'm just so, um, I think I was encouraged, not I think, I was encouraged by your story for many reasons. But one is that like, I think from the outside looking in, like when we see people just kind of doing, doing their thing, it can feel disheartening, discouraging, um perplexing all the things and even with our situation you know what i'm saying like i reached out and all the stuff but i pulled back right out of pain but it's like the lord never did mm-hmm. like like he, he's so not like this, he yeah. was the one who was primarily offended but he still stayed <laughs> like the the whole time the lord was still with you and so i think that's what i'm grateful for is that god is not like us Mm -hmm. like when he is offended when he is denied when he is not listened to when he is not honored when he is not believed he still loves he still pursues he still seeks he still shows up and he had a saint 
who was ready and available to be there with you when the time came for it. Mm -hmm. And the glory be to God, she was the one person you kept around. <laughs> <laughs> we, we thank God. Like, yeah, cause she, she, she didn't have to be. You get what I'm saying? I get what you're saying. Like, so like, that's a grace and a mercy that there was still somebody like listening to it, like had an ear for God to respond to you. I, I'm thankful for all the people because there were a couple people who like another friend that's just like, I can tell you think that you probably can't talk to me right now, but you can. <laughs> yeah. Like just sends out a message saying mm -hmm. that, but she's, she was in tune to me. Mm -hmm. And another thing that was so helpful was when I did run to a uh, friend, her husband's house and I I asked him, I, I, I asked her husband, Dan, I was like, but what are you going to think about my orientation? Mm -hmm. What do you think about my orientation? Like, I was just, I had that word in my head, probably from some article I read. Yeah. And he was like, what's your orientation to Jesus? Mm -hmm. Let's just keep focusing on that. Mm -hmm. And let's let all, let's, yeah. let's, let's start there. Cause you can start with trying to figure out what I got to do. I got to fix yeah. some stuff. I'm going to let go of that. I'm going to let go of that. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm holding on to something. I, I'm, I don't have any, my, my hands are full right now because mm -hmm. I'm holding on to Jesus. Mm -hmm. The other things are going to fall by. They're yeah. going to fall by my side because yeah. I'm holding on to Jesus. But like, you got, I got to get there first. Yeah. Mm. And definitely so thankful for all the people that prayed through, had to figure out how do you love someone if they're, I love you and I want you to know that I care about you, but I, I love God mm -hmm. and I think that God knows best for your life too. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm not going to tell you mm -hmm. that I'm bless I'm giving you my blessing right. in what you're doing right now. Right. I'm going to try to figure out how to be here for you though. I'm I'm trying I'm trying to figure that out and I I thank them, but I I like it's like the person asked me about denying myself or you're not going to this, you're not going to do that. And I'm like, I got a good thing at home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I ain't married, but I got a good thing at yeah, home with yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. Like, this love, yeah. the yeah. sending all these people, having somebody in, it's all God I mm -hmm. see. I see it. I see God through it all. Mm -hmm. So That's good, man. Yeah. Before we close, I just want you to like highlight the situation where you went on a trip with your mama and you said she was sleeping. And, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I felt like like people could resonate yeah. with what you observed. Yeah, my mom. We went on a trip um, a couple months ago. We used to go on a lot of trips together, but just the past couple years, I ain't want to go nowhere with them, yeah. <laughs> with my family. Um, and my mom was having such a good time on the trip. It was just my dad, my mom, and me. My sister didn't come with us this time. But anyways, she was having such a good time. And then we got on the plane, and it was like, two seconds you look over my mom is knocked out mm -hmm. and you're like we just got on this plane I, why is she so tired and it's like it hit me she hasn't slept in three years mm -hmm. wow. she did not sleep like my mom was so worried about me wow. so praying for, in her prayer closet you ask her how you doing today mm -hmm. and she's like i'm not doing too well and and it, she always tried to come up with another reason but yeah. it's really because my daughter is lost mm. and it's breaking my heart yeah, yeah. um wow. but it was like and she's she said to me, which I hope I hope she means it. I've given her the best gift she can have for the rest of her life. So hopefully I'm <laughs> off the hook yeah. for the rest of her life. Yeah. Um, but yeah, That's like so she she wasn't sleeping. Amen. Yeah. Before we before we end, I just want to say this. Last night, I um, the last couple of days, I've been I've been in prayer about some really serious stuff. And um, I, the other night, I felt the need to pray this prayer. Uh, well, while I was in prayer, I started to pray just randomly. Lord, don't hide your face from me don't hide your face from me and i was like why am i praying this like what, what is what is this about and so last night i was like i'm gonna like literally study what this what this means and i i, I found a, a, a blog of a guy who who wrote about it and uh he basically described it as like sometimes when we feel like god um well basically god hiding his face from us is is either judgment or or or, or chastisement right 
Uh, but like a lot of times when we feel like God is hiding his face from us, we think it's because, you know, uh, uh, because um, he's mad at us because of something that we've done. But it's really like our sin is what separates from him. And he gave this analogy of sometimes like we, we like a man who's on a lake on a boat. And he said, if you fall asleep by the sh- by the shoreline and then you wake up or whatever, and then you realize that you're far away from this shoreline, you can almost think that 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 like what created this. This distance and he's and he said what well, sin creates this distance but the, the good thing about God is that in his timing when he loves you he's the one who draws you near to him mm-hmm. and I think I think I, I've had those moments in life well, I'm like, God, like, what did I do? Like, why am I far away from you? Like, why do I, why do I feel so, so hopeless? And so like, you know, what, what, what created this distance? And even though my sin is what created it, his goodness is the one who kind of pulls me back to the shoreline because he's consistent. He's stable. Yeah. He's that shoreline. Like he doesn't move. Yeah. He doesn't move away from us. He's consistent. We move away from him. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. even in his goodness, mm-hmm. he draws us back. Yeah. And so I, th- I thank God that when I hear your story, I hear that you had some type of knowledge of who this God was and you felt hopeless at times. And it was just like, no, nah, like I've always been here, Caress. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You you've drifted away, and you don't you you can't you can't see my face. This mm-hmm. is not a physical see my face because God is a spirit, but you don't feel my presence mm-hmm. because you drifted away. But I'm gonna I'm gonna bring you to your wits end mm-hmm. to draw you back to that shoreline mm-hmm. to draw you back to me. And I just I just hear the goodness of God and yeah. allowing yeah. you to experience Him in such a beautiful way. Yeah, um, his, that's his, just dope. His kindness leads us to repentance. Amen. So every time. All right. Peace. Bye.